Hey up everyone. Right, so so as I've been as I've been saying on this channel on various shows and stuff, is that counter to what you might believe if you like read the newspapers or, or watch television news and stuff, is that there's a there's a massive negotiations about Brexit that are taking place right now between the British government and the EU, right? And that the whole Brexit thing is in a kind of precarious position at the moment because there's this transition that's going on right now and what's supposed to be happening is that we're supposed to be deciding what the future relationship between the EU <clears throat> and the UK will be. That's what we're supposed to be doing, right? It's been going on for six months as these negotiations. We're not really getting anywhere. There's like... There's certain issues that we just can't agree on, like fishing and um, equivalency and on having like a level playing field between the two of us as well, right? These are things that we just seem to be like at loggerheads about what to do about it. So, so these negotiations have been going on and like the EU have been getting really pissed off with the British because... The EU like offered Britain equivalency, so I said, if you if you allow if you show that your banking system is equivalent to the EU's banking system, then we'll allow you to like take part in like the EU market, right? And Britain was like, no, we're not going to do that. So then the EU goes like, okay, well if you're not going to do that, if you're not going to stay the same as us, then we need to know how are you going to change? How is this going to be different? from being the same, do you know what I mean? If you're going to change things, what, what is it that you're going to change and stuff? And they they presented some questions that they wanted the British to answer, and the British didn't even bother answering these questions. So the EU knew were not right pleased with the British about this. And the EU, like, Barnier keeps saying, like, the British are just, like, they're not even trying, they don't seem to be trying to, to, to get a deal at all, do you know what I mean? And, like, people are... We've only got six months left, right? This is going to be all over in, like, in January. We had an opportunity to extend it further than that, but the British decided that they didn't want to extend it and that it's all going to end. So we've only got six months to sort all this shit out, and we're absolutely nowhere near, like, sorting this out, right? And it's getting to a point now where people are, are seriously talking about the possibility that we could get to this January and not have a deal between the two of us, which means... We then end our relationship with no no deal between us at all, which then means that all our trade and everything would have to go through like the World Trade Organization rules, which are like ridiculous. You've got tariffs of like forty percent and stuff. If your exports are forty percent more expensive than what they were before, people are not going to buy them. Do you know what I mean? Like this is to go onto World Trade Organization rules would just be insanity, madness. No country trades under World Trade Organization rules. No country on earth does. So for Britain and the EU to do that would be just madness. But 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 that looks like a possibility that might fucking happen, right? You know, this like no deal Brexit is something that's like um, cropped up before uh, earlier on in the negotiations and the discussions about Brexit. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, so that's kind of like, like where we are right now is there's negotiations going on. The British and the e EU people are meeting one another, but nothing's really being decided. And there's these things, there's these issues that we can't really seem to find any kind of like middle ground or anything with. We're at loggerheads with one another. Um, so what the outcome of that will be, don't know, but it looks like it might be an ordeal, right? Which would just be horrific. So, so the thing is that, like, we've got a government, like, with Boris Johnson and stuff, who are at, who are pro Brexit, right? So, so if you listen to the government, Brexit's going to be this amazing thing that's going to like free Britain and allow Britain to be much more, a much more, like, economic power house and all this sort of stuff. This is just fantasy land. <laughs> there's no, there's absolutely no basis for any of these beliefs whatsoever whatsoever right and the thing is that like some information's come out today right um which basically proves this 
the, the, the all of this stuff that you're saying about Brexit and how amazing it's going to be, it's all bullshit, right? It's going to it's going to actually end up costing this country a hell of a lot of money. It's going to end up costing business a lot of money. It's like a tax that's going to be placed on on doing business in these countries. It's going to have massive negative effects on whether people actually do do business in this country or not. Do you know what I mean? So, so basically, if you listen to like Boris Johnson, he'll tell you, "Oh, we're going to have it's going to be effortless, basically, right?" They, even if it goes to like no deal, they think everything's just going to go really smoothly and everything's going to work out. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're basing these ideas that they talk about how things are going to be like, you know, there's going to be sunny uplands and everything's going to be amazing economically. Like, whatever, I studied economics. I don't see any of this. None of the economists that I read, and I read a lot of, like, financial literature. Like, I read Financial Times every day. I read Wall Street Journal and stuff, Bloomberg. I read all this financial shit. I read all, 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 all what economists are saying and stuff. Nobody's saying this is gonna. This is what's gonna happen. No, nobody is saying this at all, right? Everybody's saying there's gonna be massive costs that are placed upon us, and that the the economy is gonna take at least a four percent hit from Brexit. Yeah, and like, even if you got a trade deal with America, that's gonna have an uptick of about zero point six percent increase. Right, but that's not enough to counter the losing four percent from from the EU. Do you know what I mean? Like. There's nothing, right? And, like, you know, like, deals with, like, Australia and New Zealand, then those economies are tiny. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's not... They're nothing. Do you know what I mean? They're nothing. Um, you want to have, like, a trade deal with, like, China, but, yeah, Britain's done nothing but piss China off. Do you know what I mean? Like, banning Hawaii, whatever, from 5G and stuff like that. They're talking about kicking China out of um, doing nuclear power plants and stuff like that. So they're not... Britain's not really acting in a way that's, like... As has good relationships with China, they're they're like at loggerheads over what's going on in Hong Kong as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, so so yeah, whatever. That's where you want your trade deals, but that don't look like that, that's going to happen with Britain. Do you know what I mean? So where else are your trade deals going to come from? Do you know what I mean? But whatever, it's not going to be enough to replace what's going on with the EU. So like, there's no economist that says that there's going to be a benefit to Brexit. Do you know what I mean? And the thing is, like, to be honest, like the people who wanted Brexit, that was never their argument in the. They, that wasn't. They never said really. Let's do Brexit. It'll be awesome for the economy, right? Do you know what I mean? That wasn't really their argument. They were all talking about immigration and shit like that. Do you know what I mean? That's what like Brexit people were were, were interested in, or like whatever sovereignty over fucking fishing rights or whatever bullshit, right? But like it was never really. Let's do this. This will be awesome for the economy. It's just fucking Boris Johnson now and the Tory government now who are saying it's going to be fantastic for the economy. Well, nobody's, nobody thinks that's that's what's going to happen, apart from you. And you are not really given any reason as to why you think that is the case. You just, you just keep stating this, and you just think, if I say it enough, then it'll be true. Well, that's not really how it works. Do you know what I mean? So, basically, right, like, right, so... So, right now, right, they're, they're making this massive car park thing in Kent... Basically, so the government just bought a shitload of land, right? And they're basically turning it into this, like, fucking custom... The place where customs checks can take place. So, like, you know what I mean? If you're, like, exporting into the EU or whatever, then there needs to be loads of checks and stuff that's done on all, all of the, the goods that are going to cross over into the border. So that means you're going to need people to fucking... To, 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 like, check on that, right, yeah? So they're building this massive place where, like, all the lorries and stuff will have to go in there and then all their stuff will have to be checked, right? They're thinking that it's going to cost us, like, nearly 50,000 custom agents we're going to need to be able to do this, to, like, to like check everything. It's going to take 50,000 people. Do you know what I mean? That's a cost. That's costing us money to employ all these people to do this. It's costing us we've just had to buy a shitload of land to to build this thing. We've, and we've got, like, whatever buildings and stuff that all have to be built in this place. It's costing us a fortune. Do you know what I mean? Already, before we've even done it, before anything's even happened, it's already cost us a fortune in here. Yes, yeah, so whatever. So that's a cost to our economy. Do you know what I mean? Right, and essentially, like, like, so, like, whatever, we haven't got a final deal about how, how things are going to be. But, like, we we have got some stuff that the government released about how things are going to work at the border and shit like that, yeah? 
And basically what that does is that increases the costs to the UK economy by £7 billion, pounds, right? That's a, that's a huge amount of money. That's how much it's going to cost to, like, impose a border between the two of us so that the border can function, all the, all the guards and stuff and customs officers and things that they're going to need. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and like we've got, like, a few borders with the EU. Do you know what I mean? Like, in, in Ireland, there's different borders there. Then we've got, like, over the over the channel and, like, into, into like, Holland and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Um... So, so whatever, right, the thing is, like, it, it's a massive cost to us, 7 billion, that works out, 135 million pounds per week, this is what, this is what Brexit is going to cost us, do you know what I mean, right, basically, the government just released this 206 pages of how, what happens about how to trade goods, do you know what I mean, like, 206 pages of this, this is all new regulation, this is all new red tape, this is all new bullshit, that businesses and companies are all going to have to do to be able to trade, right? That they didn't have, that they don't have to do right now. This is all new shit that they're all going to have to do, right? And it's going to end up with a massive cost to us, yeah. So like this effect, these effects, these negative effects, things, right? Yeah. That's like what's happening to businesses, to companies, to capitalists and stuff, to people who like want who like run the economy and get the economy working and shit. Yeah, they've now got these massive costs and red tape and shit that they have to do. Right? Yeah, whatever. So whatever, if you start putting costs and stuff like that, that's when our, our companies go bust. And do you know what I mean? I, I have a shrinking economy once you start putting more and more costs on it to, to trade and stuff. But, but whatever, this is what they're doing. This is what they're doing. They somehow think that that's a good thing, but. I don't, whatever, there's no logical reason to think that that's in any way a good thing. These are massive costs you're placing upon the British economy. How is that a good thing? Do you know what I mean? I see, that's nonsense. But yeah, Boris Johnson thinks it's a good idea. He's a knobhead. Right, but the thing is, right, so this is massive effect that it's having for companies and businesses and the, the, the backbone of the economy. And whatever, it's going to have effect on just ordinary people, right? So, so now, like, if you want to travel to the EU... Right, basically right now, if you want to travel to EU, all you have to do is just travel there, right? Walk through the passport, flick your passport, and walk through into things, not even check nothing, do you know what I mean? It's like basically living in the same country, right? But after this, it's all that's all going to change, right? That's all going to change. You're going to need permits and stuff to go to different countries and stuff that you don't need right now, right? So you're going to have to apply for them before you're allowed to travel anywhere. Like you're gonna have to like get like insurance. Like so, right now, if you if you like go abroad and like whatever you, you get injured and you go to a hospital, yeah, and there's a bill, yeah. But basically, the NHS pays that through this like scheme thing through the EU. Yeah, well, that's not going to be there anymore. So you're gonna have to buy your own insurance. Right, so that's another cost to going abroad that you're gonna have to have that you don't have to have now. Right, you're gonna have to buy health insurance in case anything goes wrong when you're abroad. Right, yeah. If you want to travel with your pets, which a lot of people do, right, right now there's a pets passport scheme in EU, so basically your pets can just travel with you, it's not a problem, right, yeah, they have their own passport and they can they can travel over the borders and stuff, yeah, yeah, that's not going to be allowed, right, if you want to take your, your pet, you're going to have to get, like, fucking vets to, like, to, like, basically like um vouch for the fact that this, this can happen like four months before you travel, you're going to have to get this vet thing, it's another cost. It's going to cost you to go, right? But also, with the mobile phone things, right? So, like, right now, if you travel abroad in EU and you use your mobile phone, it's exactly the same cost cost as if you used it at home. Do you know what I mean? But now, there's going to be roaming costs that you're going to have to pay when you go abroad. So, that means using your telephone is going to be much more expensive when you go abroad than what it, than what it would be now, right? So, whatever, so, well, this is, everything, everything about Brexit is just adding costs to everything, do you know what I mean? Everything. This just proves, this, this, this information that's come out about all this, right, just proves that Brexit is a ridiculously bad idea economically, do you know what I mean? This country is going to take a massive hit because of Brexit, which means loads of people are going to lose their fucking jobs. People are going to be suffering in poverty because of Brexit. And Boris Johnson thinks that that's a good idea. 